This is the proof of concept for a new tool for Tailspire. So here's the situation. It's one hour to game time and you're the GM and didn't have time to prepare. Okay, what do you do? Well, you figure that you can get the uh, characters to go on a small side quest to a dungeon and uh, use that to fill the session. But where do, would you get a, such a dungeon? I mean, uh, you know, even a dungeon needs uh, some preparation. Well, that's where this lovely website comes in called uh, Donjon or Donjon. I don't know the uh, pronunciation, but here we go. Now, this website has a bunch of different um, useful uh, tools and things, but among them is under D&D 5e, you will find the random dungeon generator. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, if this generates a dungeon layout, why is it important that it's 5e or 4e? Well, this not only generates the dungeon layout, but when you actually can uh, tell it to construct the dungeon, it will generate not only the dungeon map, but information on all of the rooms associated with that dungeon, including things like uh, traps, including things like what kind of doors are um, in each room. Uh, what kind of monsters are in each room? What kind of treasure is in, is in each room? And so on. And that's, of course, where the game mechanics come in, um, the, where it's important, whether it's 5e or 3e or <clears throat> 3.5e. So this is good. This is good. Um, we can very quickly generate a den dungeon this way. And even the monsters and all that stuff is good to go. So we're almost there. But then you say, wait, we're using Tailspire to play this game. And I mean, look at this dungeon. Do you know how long it would take me to create this dungeon in Tailspire? I mean, there's no way I'd be ready in one hour. And that's where the Donjon Maker or Donjon Maker comes in. It will take certain maps from this website and turn them into a Tailspire slab. Now, we do have a little bit of uh, <clears throat> limitations on what we can do here. So uh, let's, uh, let's go through that. Now, uh, I will note that at this stage, um, this is a proof of concept. At the moment, it only uses one um, tile theme uh, and it only uses the one by one tiles. So most of the two by two tiles where you actually find in interesting things on the wall are currently not supported yet, but um, before it is officially released, I hope to have uh, it being able to select uh, themes for the tiles and be able to utilize the uh, two by two uh, tiles to um, provide uh, more variance. But for now, let's just see what it can do. So uh, first thing we want to do is we want to go and go to the dungeon size, select custom, and we want to select a size that is square. So same number of columns, same number of rows. That is currently a limit, uh, limitation or a requirement for the donjon maker. Um, I have tested er uh, everything with 40, so I'm gonna go with 40 by 40. Uh, now, the other thing that we wanna do is we want to go down to our polymorph rooms and say no. Um, what that will do is it'll make sure all of the uh, rooms are square or rectangular, uh, which is good because at the moment the uh, Donjon Maker doesn't really handle circular rooms or diagonal rooms very well. Uh, I like to turn stairs off, and that's pretty well it. So now... Uh, we're going to tell it to uh, construct that dungeon. And once again, here we get our map. Here we get a, um, <clears throat> a legend indicating what all of the st stuff on the map means. And then we have the information for all of the rooms. So the GM can save this uh, uh, so that he knows what all the rooms actually are. But we're interested in the map here. So we're going to, uh, to right click on the map 
uh, save image as. And the, uh, the version right now that I'm using has a hard-coded location for the map. Um, obviously, in the released version, they'll, um, there'll be uh, a browse button or something like that so that you can save that map anywhere you want and then be able to pick it off. But for now, uh, in this demo, it is hard-coded, so I'm going to save it there. And now the Donjon Maker itself um, is a two-part process. Currently, half of it is a Win app. Um, or sorry, a Windows Form app, and the other half is a um, JavaScript uh, browser uh, page. Uh, but don't worry, uh, you can run that locally, so you do not actually need to be hosting any kind of a website uh, to make use of it. Uh, eventually, I hope to get them all into just one application, but right now, uh, one part was written in JavaScript, one part was written in uh, C Sharp, so that was kind of the quickest way for me to get this thing going. Okay, so let's fire up that application. Okay, so here we are. I fired up the application. Again, the application at the moment is very simple. Uh, it might have a few more bells and whistles, hopefully, by the time I release it. Um, at the moment, there's basically only one um, selection here, which is the dungeon map size. At the moment, uh, the application does not auto-detect that. So you need to enter that. And I found a, a bit of a quirk that if I generate a, let's say a 40 by 40 dungeon on the Donjon uh, website, it actually has 41 tiles across and 41 tiles down. Uh, so whatever number you put, uh, put here in the application needs to be one higher than what you put on the website. Uh, you will also notice that there's only one number, and that is because the map uh, is expected to be square. That's a current uh, requirement of the Donjon Maker at this point. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to hit the Scan button. And what that's doing right now is it's running through this map and basically looking at the graphical map and converting it into the different components such as doors, hallways, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, once it does that, it then applies various algorithms for actually building the Tailspire tiles. So for example, rooms like this will be filled in with interior tiles because the interior wall tiles look a lot better than stone walls. Uh, so we'll fill that in where possible. Um, it will fill in the doors. Uh, it does do a little bit of adjustment on the doors because uh, with interior wall tiles, the doors uh, look a lot better in Tailspire when they are actually moved one into the room. So this um, application adjusts those doors. Um, it also will create a double door if you're going from one room with a very short hall and into the next room. It'll create a double door um, to make it look more um, appealing. Um, and once it get, gathers all that information and, and creates that, it um, writes out all of the Tailspire tiles that then need to be turned into a Tailspire slab for us to insert. Uh, so that process can take a little while. You can see that it is writing out the tiles right now. Um, but depending on the power of your computer and the size of the map, uh, it might take a little while. We can see it's updating the tile it is writing, but the progress bar is not updating um, from the previous step. Um, hopefully in the final version, uh, I'll get a little bit more of a progress bar so people can have an estimate at how long it's going to take. But usually it doesn't take more than a couple of minutes and we can see it is now ready. So that's the first uh, phase. Uh, and now we need to run that second uh, file um, which actually then takes that information and creates the Tailspire slab. Um, I've already run that um, uh, that uh, application here, uh, so it basically is uh, it's running it through my browser. But again, you can see it is not web hosting it. So <clears throat> even if you don't have any web server 
up and running, uh, you can uh, you can just double click on that file and it will run in your browser. I'm going to refresh this. So uh, two things we can see here. We can see a convert button and we can see a ASCII representation of your map. Um, you don't really need to worry about this. This is more for troubleshooting. Uh, if you are playing with some of the translations, um, this shows you what uh, how that graphical map was inter uh, interpreted. And it will show you, for example, the interior walls that it added and things like that. Uh, but you don't need to worry about this at all. All you need to do is press the convert button. That generates the slab code. We're going to copy that. Make sure you go all the way to the end. Copy. And now we're just going to fire up Tailspire and paste it in. Okay, I'm just going to make a new uh, new board here. And once I got my board, all I'm going to do is control V for paste. Drop the slab, right click to end dropping. And there is our maze. Uh, we can see that um, we've got the solid stone uh, wall for very close hallways. Uh, but anywhere where there is actual room, we can see that it's filled in with the interior uh, tiles. Uh, we can see uh, doors have been placed. Um, even under the door, we've got still... Uh, the flooring and uh, that's that's basically it so again at this point no bells and whistles it's just got this one uh, theme of tiles um, all of the tiles are the one by one tiles so we're not seeing any of the interesting wall uh, variations um, but uh, it's a start um, so the next thing I would like to do is um, have it uh, take advantage of the two by two tiles to uh, add in some variety to the walls um, and to allow some themes so that you can not be stuck with the tavern theme, but you can go to uh, different themes. And uh, that's, um, that's it. But you can see that um, in a matter of minutes, we generated a whole dungeon um, based on the uh, donjon or donjon uh, website uh, randomly generated map. So, you know, unlike um, Tales Taverns, where you can most likely get um, some kind of a dungeon, um, this has infinite possibilities because anytime you generate a new random map, you can turn that into, uh, into Tailspire. Um, there are still things that you will probably need to adjust afterwards. You can see some situations. Um, the Donjon website likes to put door uh, door entries in in the corner of the room. And if you've got the interior um, wall tiles, you can see that this entrance is you know pretty uh, pretty tight. So you might want to fix those up. Uh, the application does actually have a concept of they're called translations where you can look for certain patterns in the map and rearrange the map based on that. So things like this, um, this door situation where it's kind of being pinched off, uh, you could actually add that into the translations to, um, to try to remedy that. Um, and currently it also doesn't put anything inside the rooms. So any of the stuff like the, um, <clears throat> the encounters, it doesn't automatically put those in here. Any of the loot or any even props, it doesn't put in here. 
but uh, you know that's hopefully something that will come out eventually so yeah the as a proof of concept uh, there you go and uh, hopefully um, a prototype uh, or like, like a um, an initial version will be released soon and that's about it <laughs>